This video is brought to you by Sporlin. Quality, integrity, and tradition. Today we are back and we are going to go ahead and replace some bearings on this unit. Uh, to refresh your memory, this unit has some bearings that are just grinding inside. I don't know if you can hear that or not, but it's in the bearing. It's not necessarily in the motor. It's not in the motor. I can turn it off. I can hear both bearings grinding right now. Um, it looks like the seals are busted on the bearing too because the grease is all on the outside. So this is going to be a chore because this is a double wheel and the bearings you can't get them out because of the placement you got to take the wheels off so um, we've got some new parts we're going to i got another person here with me today we've got a bunch of stuff right here went ahead and ordered a new shaft two bearings and two blower wheels and we'll see what we can get to and what we can get on film the first thing we have to do is we need to take this whole assembly out if you've ever worked on these lennox units they got two screws right here the whole thing slides out but we're not going to work on it in the unit. We're going to pull the whole assembly out and set it on some ladders so that way we can really get some work on it. To make our jobs easier, we're going to go ahead and take the motor off the unit, lay it down so that way we don't have to worry about the weight of the motor. So we're going to get that disassembled, then we'll pull it out and go from there. So these are nice in that they do slide out so you can grease the bearings and different things. So that is cool. But so what we're going to do is unhook electrical to the motor, take the motor, set it on top. Um, and then go from there. You gotta watch out when you're pulling these out. This one's had it happen where the wires get pinched and it'll, it'll rub the wires. So this one's happened on it before. So you just gotta be careful when you're yanking on these things, so. But yeah, we're gonna unhook the motor. All right, we're gonna go ahead and shoot this with a penetrating oil, get all the stuff lubricated, or not lubricated, but get the oil on there so it can start doing its work. We'll definitely sand everything too and clean it all up. We made use of some cinder blocks, uh, got the blower assembly out, so now we can better get in here and be able to do everything we need to do. Since we got it apart, we can do a heat exchanger inspection. I don't think there's going to be any problems, but we'll do a better one later, but everything looks good. So These blower wheels also are very caked with dirt and stuff too, so they're going to get some more airflow by us uh, replacing these. So, all right. Um, now we're just going to confirm before we start hacking anything up. We already checked the wheel size. Those were good. Um, we got to check the shaft size real quick, make sure that's good, and check the bearing size, and then we can start cutting things apart. So we're going to work on this keyway right here. Um, that's what holds the, the pulley, basically, in place, and then the set screw keeps it steady so that way it doesn't move back and forth. Um, what we're going to do is get the keyway out it, give it some WD-40, or penetrating oil. I use WD on this one. You can get this loose. There you go. You gotta watch out too because as your Allen wrench starts to go bad, you'll think it's coming loose, but really it's just stripping in there. I probably should get a better Allen. This is my tiny one that I keep in my bag. Don't lose any set screws, save them all. Okay, so then what you're gonna do is take a set of dikes or wire cutters and try to pinch the key tight and use leverage to pull it out if you can. Oh, see, it's not working. All right, so they don't always work the way I wanted them to. Sometimes you can get those keys out. I couldn't, so I've got my pulley puller on here and we're just gonna go ahead and use the impact and very carefully drive it off. It can be difficult. See, it's, uh, it's not even, that's why. It's like wanting to pull one, one direction. Side, yeah. So let go for a sec. Something's not even, what is it? I mean, it seems like it's there. I'm gonna 
loosen it. We're gonna try to get a better grip on it. Keep it straight. Come on over here, I'll hold the arms, you get the impact. Let's put some penetrating oil on here. Put it right here, and I'll try to hold it. Tighten it? Yeah, tighten it. Pulled it off with the key still in there, so now we can get it off, clean it up, and reuse it. Now that I got the shaft off, now I want to explain something too. You know, this is never a perfect science. I'm sure there's a lot of people watching saying, hey, I would have done this, I would have done that. Life happens, you know. It's been a while since I've done any power transmission bearing work or anything. Um, we used to do a lot of it, but now that equipment's gotten so cheap, everybody just replaces everything. I was actually surprised they repaired this one. But, um, so anyways, we're just gonna start disassembling everything. There's a very good chance I'm gonna end up cutting the shaft off, but I can't get my, I'm gonna try to use my band saw if I can, but I can't get it in here with this bearing. So we're gonna try to pull the bearing off first, and then we'll go from there. Um, so like I said, it's not perfect. You just gotta kinda do what you can, do your best. Go down 
down and see if I have any of these fittings. star bits. I don't know the name of it, but cool. That's off. A little bit out of time. Now we'll try to pull the bearing off. I think it'll come right off too because we've been uh, working at it. Did you get some more sandpaper? Oh, it's right here. I got it. Okay. So let's get some penetrating oil right in these little grooves. This guy's already loose, so it should just pull off. Should. going to do here is I'm going to try to grip the race on the bearing and move the shaft so I can keep it in one spot maybe is the idea but also don't want to yeah see I don't know if it'll work or not actually coming apart. So I don't want to grip this because this is tightening down on the shaft. I'm trying to grab the race above that if I can. Let's try this. Maybe I shouldn't have uh, loosened these guys. Because if I keep that there, then I think I got a better chance at getting the shaft off. All that I'm trying to do is break the bearing race free of the shaft. I'm using the, the weight of the wheels and everything to spin it free. So now I can get some penetrating oil in there. And this guy's loose. Nice and good. So that thing should slide right off now. So if I was changing just this bearing, we'd be in luck. And I wouldn't have to change the whole shaft and the blower wheels, but life happens. It slides right off. Cleanliness is your best friend. Clean it. And you can see too, that looks like the bearing seal had failed because that's all the grease coming out uh, in one yeah. spot. That or it was over greased and it blew the seal out. That happens too. The next question is, can I get this in there to cut it? Gosh, it would be so close. It might work. Cut the shaft off. I'm just wondering what's gonna be easier. Get in there and cut it or just fight it and try to get the whole shaft out? Well, I know for sure this has to come off, so we're gonna take that off real quick. how it went together too. Why don't 
we set this like this. So that way we know that's where it goes. Okay, so we've got that. Will you do me a favor and go downstairs, just take the bucket with you and ask the manager for a bunch of towels. Towels? Yeah, we're gonna go through our lot here real quick. Question is, can I get this in here now to cut this guy? Ooh, I can. Look at that. We're gonna test the strength of a M12 bandsaw now. I don't know how good this thing is. Surprisingly, it's cutting through it like butter. And I beat the crap out of this blade. I'm more than halfway through the shaft by now. That's awesome. Heck yeah, Milwaukee. I take back all the bad things I said about you. Now we got it cut, I can drop the wheel out. So we're gonna go focus on the other side now. See what we gotta do to get the other side loose. I probably should have loosened this before I cut the shaft on the other side. But we'll see, it should be okay. That came right off. Let's see if we can get this race loose. I'm very impressed with that Milwaukee bandsaw. All right, so we're trying to loosen this race over here. Ooh, this one, I, sh I didn't think straight and I should have loosened both of these before I cut that free. Oh yeah. Let's go ahead and do this. Pull this back this way. Okay, push it back up. off so this one's free. can slide that one out okay next I'm gonna go ahead and cut this to get this out of our hair let's move this over just cutting to give ourselves space to work in here
Damn, that's crazy. It cuts right through that steel. It's awesome. If I can get myself into there or not. Yeah, I can get in. this together so we know how to assemble it and hopefully we can get this out now now that we got the blower wheels free we're gonna pull them out this way but we got to get these little brackets right here off so there's usually a couple screws we'll take those off then we'll pull the blower wheels out and we'll work on getting the, um, the keyways out of them okay so we flipped the housing over we're doing them one at a time so we don't get confused we're gonna put the bracket back right here then we're gonna flip it over and mount it back and then we'll worry about the shaft and everything in a minute and we've got the uh, old blower wheel we still need to get the key out of here but we'll do that in a few minutes we're gonna just doing it one step at a time that way we don't get confused and put blower wheels in backwards or anything all right we've got the blower wheels in we took it one piece at a time so now we're gonna feed the shaft through and then we gotta focus on getting those keys out of those things. Actually, we'll probably do the keys first. So that way we can figure that out. So these use a very interesting looking key in that it looks like this. So it slides in and stops. So um, this one wasn't coming out, so I cut the wheel, pulled it out. This one right here, I just hit the shaft and it popped right out. So we're good, we got the keys now. So we're gonna start assembling the other one. So we just slowly push the, th the shaft through, making sure that we're not damaging the wheel. Put the bearing on, slid it through this side. We'll put the keys in after, and then we're gonna put the brackets that hold the bearings in now, and then that'll stabilize everything. So we're just piece by piece putting this back together. We went ahead and tightened these brackets. We tightened the bearings down. We lifted, luckily we have all the old spots, so we lifted everything back up to where it was. Now we're to the point where we're centering the blower wheels because the blower wheels are still loose. So we're just finding the happy medium. This one looks like it's got too much, so we need to go back a little bit more. So we just kind of push it that way. Just kind of get an idea right there. Get an idea right there. Maybe a little bit more this way. Maybe right there. Nope, nope, a little bit too much. It's just finding the happy medium of the centering of the blower wheel. And then we're gonna put the keys back in and then tighten the wheels down. On the keyway, what you do is lay down a piece of sandpaper like this and then just rub it on the sandpaper to clean it off. That way you get a nice clean key. And then up here, we're gonna have to but you get the point then you got a nice clean key put it in there put a little WD-40 on the shaft so you can uh, push the key right in so there's a problem here and it's okay but we got to push the whole shaft this way a lot because this whole shaft there's not enough room for the key so take the whole shaft we'll have to recenter everything so take the whole shaft and push it this way Uh, find out remember how much it was sticking out maybe like this much I think on that side wasn't it pretty much need to go more We need to get it basically About right there Go ahead and clean up these other keys yeah. Thank <laughs> you. 
So we've got everything torqued down nice and tight. Good, flows easy. Blower wheels are centered as best as possible. Moves freely. So we're gonna wipe down this blower housing and then slide it back in. We pushed the blower assembly back in. We tried to clean it off as much as possible. I'm gonna go get new belts and I'm gonna get a new pulley too, if I can. But I got it in there because I wanna bump it and get it running. Uh, before they get too many customers in there because just from us agitating and moving everything I'm sure we're gonna blow dust down in the building. So So um, I got my guy another person that's working with me going downstairs and uh, we're gonna um, Bump start it and he's gonna let me know if it blows dust into the bar area So you can hear the sound difference it's Much quieter, so I'm still gonna put a new motor pulley and uh, belts on this guy too But we, at least we can have it running so we can cool off their dining room we're also going to check and adjust the charge too. Um, I have a feeling that the charge, the last time I checked it was low, be, it seemed low because it was airflow. That wheel was really dirty. Okay, so we're going to replace this pulley and I already pulled the set screw out and we just take the ball joint separator, or I call it a tuning fork, and pop it. And it applies pressure evenly. It comes right off. It makes your life a lot easier. All right, so we kind of want to start with this same setting as the other one because we really don't want to mess with the balance too much. So you want to try to match it up. Remember, this is what sets the speed. This adjustable pulley is what sets the speed of the blower assembly. So if you want to increase the airflow, you adjust the, the motor pulley. I have a feeling I'm going to be speeding this one up because I feel like we're running low airflow on this unit. But I can't really speed it up too much because this building has been balanced. And we don't want to mess with the air balance of the building. So, about right there, about right there. careful about getting the WD-40 or the penetrating oil, you don't want it to get into the bearing. So I'm just using it to lubricate the surface. There we go. Much better. So then I'm just going to turn it until the keyway hole aligns and I can push the key in there. Once I can push the key in, being very careful because you don't want to mess the bearing up on the motor. I'm going to give it some love taps. Nothing heavy. so I need to sand it. Yeah, I gotta sand the key because there's a pretty big groove on there, I forgot. Thank you. 
So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna pull the, the set screw out to make sure that the key is underneath it. And it is. Because the whole point of that key is for the set screw to press against it. So you wanna, if you can pull the, key, the, the set screw out, you wanna make sure the key is firmly underneath it. And then when we tighten it, we're gonna do what I call running it. So you're gonna tighten it, back it off, and then you'll notice that every time you go tighter, Every time you back it off and then tighten it again, you'll be able to go tighter. And what you're doing is you're setting a groove in that key. There, nice and good. Nice and firm. Everything looks good. Electrical's good. We're gonna push it back in. did what I said not to do. You gotta watch out these uh, wires will get tangled up in the motor plates. makes different types of wipes but they work really good for cleaning your tools off these are viper ones um, yeah they get all the grease so after like bearing jobs and stuff where it's real greasy I'm always in there cleaning my tools off because they just get nasty it sucks everything gets covered in grease you know from you getting it on your gloves and your hands and all that so um, we're currently uh, recovering the gas out of each stage of that guy and weighing the charge back in because when I had originally diagnosed this unit it was acting like it had low charge but like I had said already I was worried about the airflow because of the bad bearing and the dirty blower wheels so we're gonna go ahead and weigh the charge back in and then we'll do a evaluation on the system once we're done with all that the unit's been running for a while we're just going through the charge so third stage um, we really didn't have to add any gas I think a couple ounces I'm just evaluating everything. It's looking pretty good. Numbers are a little off, but we still haven't quite stabilized yet. And I don't have the first stage running because we're currently recovering the gas out of that one. We already charged up the second one, so that'll be the next one I check. So third stage is looking pretty good. Um, my approach is a little bit low, but I know it's not overcharged. It's possible the condenser could be a little dirty. Um, my split is low but i also am missing a compressor right now so that explains that um, i'm not going to be too worried about this one this one looks pretty good to me for the most part so we're going to go ahead and jump on over to the second stage see how that one's looking so this is the second compressor um, we're running a little low on the head pressure um, i'm gonna have to probably check some numbers because we shouldn't have a negative approach temperature i probably need to adjust the air outside air temperature right now but this one is not scaring me. The pressures look okay. It's about 75 degrees, 76 degrees outside. Um, so we're just gonna keep watching it. Again, I, I don't, I have to be careful because I don't have all the compressors running right now. And it does say to have all the compressors running when you're checking approach temps. And then also um, my capacity and my airflow is gonna probably be off, I'm assuming, because I don't have all the compressors running either. So this is saying I have really high airflow at the moment. Which another thing too is that, and I'll have to email them, but this is a 13 ton unit and uh, they only have a spot for 12 and a half ton on the Linux thing. So, so uh, but yeah, we're, 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 I'm not too worried about this. We're looking good. All right, last one's looking good. Head pressure's low, but I'm not too worried about that. These things, they are kind of funky sometimes, but temperature splits better, air flows better. Not gonna get perfect. I think we have a dirty condenser too. Um, sub cooling, we always run at the top end of the sub cooling, 12, 13 degrees usually. Super heat's right where it should be. I'm, I'm feeling pretty confident in this. Um, nothing stabilized out yet, just out of curiosity. What does Measure Quick say? Liquid line temp is below outdoor temperature. I don't like that, but I don't understand that right now because it may be just a bad spot where I'm clamped. I usually clamp right there though. I don't doubt that we've got lower airflow. Should be better than it was though. 
So I'm just gonna let this run. I'm happy with it. Um, we're gonna tell him to keep an eye on it. Uh, we'll probably talk to him about cleaning the condensers too, and then we can reevaluate everything once we clean the condensers. So that was a fun one. Uh, it's actually been probably years since I've done a bearing job that big. And that's not even that a big one. I mean, that, you know, I don't work on anything bigger than like 25 tons for my package units. So, um, that's the first time I've ever done a double blower wheel though. Um, you know, I wasn't too worried about it. You just got to try to break it down and think about things logically. Okay. You know, but the very important thing when you're doing anything like this is before you start cutting and destroying double, triple check that everything you have is correct. All the parts are going to work. Nothing's damaged, you know, and then systematically take them apart. I always try to, you know, um, not cut anything or break anything, damage anything if I don't have to. But in this situation, I had to cut the shaft. The way I like to look at it is, is what happens if something, I find out that the part is wrong and I have to put everything back together. In this situation, it was a, a, a go or no go basically, because, you know, if, um, if I didn't cut that, it would have taken me forever. But the moment that I cut it, you know, I had no other choice but to replace everything. And if something was bad, I would have been in trouble. Like if that shaft wasn't right, because that shaft was special order, it took a while to get it. So it's just one of those things, you know, um, you just got to go in there and, you know, think everything through, don't rush through it, you know, and just take your time. All right. Um, another thing too, though, in, in my opinion, you guys tell me if you feel the same way, but I feel that you always need, you know, I, even going through that job, I was still a little like, uh, Am I doing this right? Am I doing, you know, I'm still a little insecure. I'm still a little worried. And in my opinion, having that little bit of fear actually helps to make sure that you're doing a good job because you second guess yourself. And yes, I know second guessing yourself can waste time, but it also keeps you on your toes. And, you know, overconfidence can be a problem too. You know, you don't want to be unconfident. You know, you, you don't want to, you know, make the customers feel like you don't know what you're doing. But at the same time, you want to have that little bit of edge, you know, worried inside you. So that way it keeps you on your toes and makes you double check before you make any big mistakes. Okay. Other than that, um, you know, these units are never perfect guys. There's not going to be, I, I have never seen a unit that has perfect superheat and sub coin, perfect airflow, all that good stuff. Okay. So in this situation, I weighed in the charge. So I know we had the right charge. Everything was looking half ass decent. It's not going to be perfect. Okay. I, I, you're never going to find a package unit out there. That's absolutely perfect, especially in Southern California. Our duct work is so jacked up on everything. So, you know, sometimes you just got to deal with what you have in front of you and do the best at what you can. Um, I start to notice trends. I mean, I use measure quick. I really do like measure quick, but I'm not necessarily always going by their numbers and their recommendations. I like to look at, you know, their diagnosis and, you know, compare to what I'm thinking. Most of the time I can pretty much uh, um, guarantee you that I have airflow problems, but you know, for instance, on these Linux package units, I always run high sub cooling and that's just the way that they are. Um, I typically run anywhere from 13 to 15 degrees sub cooling on these things, even though, you know, the ideal number is 10 degrees. I can't tell you that I've ever seen 10 degrees sub cooling on a Linux package unit. It just is what it is. So, you know, I do trust measure quick and I really do like it. But at the same time, I realize I have to use my brain still too. Okay. I'm not letting the computer decide for me that this is what you're supposed to do. Um, also, you know, I mentioned in the video that, uh, this unit is a, a 13 ton unit and measure quick only had a spot for a 12 and a half ton or a, f or a 15 ton, I think, or something like that. It was, it, it stopped at 12 and a half tons. So I had it set for 12 and a half tons. So, you know, that's why it was saying the airflow was kind of out of whack. You know, um, you just got to kind of use your brain. You have to know, you know, these digital tools are awesome and I do love them. They're great. I recommend measure quick, smart probes, all that different stuff to everybody. But you also have to know the basics. You have to, you can't just let these things decide for you because that's not going to work. Okay. You do have to be able to look at things and you have to, you know, make decisions on the fly and say, okay, this is as good as it's going to get. Or, you know, that this thing says that I have, you know, this problem, but you know, that's not the case. So sometimes you have to make those, you know, decisions on the fly and you have to know how to interpolate what, 
um, the digital tools and different things are, are telling you. Okay. But again, I want to be clear. I totally am for digital tools and digital gauges and all that stuff, but you just, I just want to reiterate, you just have to understand how the system is supposed to work too. So that way you can tell when there's something wrong or, or in my case, the airflow, I didn't have the ability to choose a 13 ton unit. So I had to kind of just, you know, wing it and say, Hey, this is okay. This unit's working properly. Okay. Um, I really, really appreciate you guys taking the time to watch these videos. Please give me some feedback down in the bottom. Uh, do me a favor and share these videos with your friends. If you know anybody that's going to like the videos, let's hope that I can help someone else out too. Um, other than that, uh, just want to remind you guys that I do my live streams Monday nights, work permitting at 5 p.m. Pacific time. What I mean by that is, is that if I'm super busy, I'll have to cancel the live stream. But um, tentatively, Monday evenings, 5 p.m. Pacific time, I do Q&A live streams on YouTube uh, where I just talk about videos, talk about comments, questions, emails, help people out as much as I can share the little bit of knowledge that I have. Okay. Really appreciate you guys. And we will catch you guys next time. Okay.